You gotta answer this. You got it. What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, you, you gotta give him that hawk too and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was funny. Trashy, but funny. Imitating your blowjob skills will make you TikTok famous, but it's probably not likely to get you a husband. Women might complain about that, say it's double standards, like men get to brag about their sexual conquests all the time. Why is it different when a woman does it? It's because men are held to masculine standards and women are held to feminine standards. There are different expectations for men and women. Have you not figured that out yet? But surely men want a woman who is sexually confident, who has some experience, who knows what she's doing. Listen, ladies, I don't know who told you that that was what men we're looking for, but they know nothing about the male brain. I want you to observe, I found this clip fascinating. After revealing that in her sex life, one of these women has a roster, listen to how the man responds. Who would you go for, that one, this one, or this one? Neither. What? I can tell you all three. You would have told me she was over a roster, and if she's her friend, and she's her friend, none of them are good. You gotta stay true to yourself, King. What do you think is the body count? I'm gonna say 15, and I'm gonna say over 20. So, body Truly. What's your body count? Four. Three? Four. Four. So what's the perfect body count for a woman? Uh, for a woman, I'm gonna say under seven. Under seven. Under seven. Damn. So Any, so anything above is crazy. None of, none of these can be. None of these can have a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta be worthy of yourself, man. You're worth more than that. But you don't think high body count means more experience? More experience? I don't give a fuck about more experience. Shit, what would you rate them then? What I rate them? They good looking. Nah. Nah. You gotta stay true to yourself, man. I mean, fuck me. That guy is, is savage. But uh, is he wrong? My favorite part is when the interviewer is like, she's got a high body count, but she's like more experienced. Isn't that a good thing? And he's like, experience? I don't give a Talk about more experience. Maybe if a guy is having like a one night stand with a woman who he does not respect, who he would never marry, then her body count doesn't matter. All that matters is that she can perform. He's looking for one night of pleasure. If she can deliver on that, then that's fine. But for your wife, for the mother of your children, the woman who you fall in love with, who you care for, open your heart to, be vulnerable in front of, the person that you trust, that you feel safe with, do you really want that woman to have been with 30 guys and to be experienced? When she pulls out some like crazy sex move and you're just having a one night stand, your thought is like, yeah, this is awesome. She's a freak, let's do it. But if this is the love of your life and you're having like a soul to soul lovemaking session, you want the feeling to be like you two are the only people that exist in the world, that your connection is special. And so if she pulls out some well-practiced freaky sex move, then it's going to burst his love bubble where he thinks that it's just the two of you and no one else exists. He's going to be thinking, okay, what was that? Where did she learn that move? And how is she so good at it? Like how much practice has she gotten? How many guys has she been with? Her sexual confidence in this moment scares me. Y'all, I'm struggling. So, big surprise, I'm talking to this new guy. And he was straight up honest with me. He said, I've been going on these really great dates, but there's just been this one big deal breaker every time. Like, it's been a problem. And I'm like, okay, I'll bite. What is it? Like, why don't we just get this out of the f***ing way? Like, might as well figure it out so we don't catch feels and then be like, oh, damn, this sucks. And... He tells me, he says, I'm too big. And I was like, what do, you, what do you mean you're too big? He said, usually girls see me, my dick, and say F that. And I'm sitting here like, mm, how do I not sound like a f***ing hoe telling him that won't be a f***ing problem? Like, give me it! The more sexual partners that a woman has had, the less likely she is to be happy, faithful and committed. That is not my opinion, those are facts. Have a look at this, the chance of divorce after five years of marriage goes up the more sexual partners that you've had. And the number of women who have had 10 plus partners before marriage keeps climbing higher. This is a worrying trend because sex is an integral part of the pair bonding experience. 
One of the reasons why women never forget who they lost their virginity to is because going through that experience with somebody is incredibly emotional. It's intense, it's new, it's exciting, it's scary. It is a vulnerable experience for a woman and it requires her to feel safe, to trust the man that she is with because she's going to be bonded to him after that. He is now a part of her. It's not just losing her virginity to a lesser extent every new sexual frontier is an important opportunity for pair bonding. The first time that she does this particular sexual act with a partner. The first time she looks into her partner's eyes when she climaxes. The first time that she says, I love you during sex. Each new experience requires courage and vulnerability. And safely navigating that with your partner is what bonds you to them. Every man knows this intuitively. We feel it on a biological level. And so it makes sense why men are not lining up to give long-term commitment to women who are sexually experienced with a bunch of other dudes. Unless he's got some cuckold thing going on. There's no guy out there who's thinking, oh, I really hope that my future wife is really sexually experienced and has had sex with lots of different men because that's just like a big bonus for me. Yay! That's not what he's looking for. He wants bonding. He wants commitment. He wants loyalty, safety, trust. He wants love. Yes, love. Men want to love women and they want to be loved by women. And every man knows he can feel it that a woman who has been with a lot of men before him has less of a capacity to pair bond and to love him. And deep down, women know this too. That's why they don't tell their boyfriends about their sexual past. They know it. They know that their previous sexual experiences have diminished their capacity to pair bond with their current partner. That's why they lie about it. Flashback for my longtime subscribers. We're going to watch a clip that I shot myself seven years ago, back when I first started this channel. Check it out. Have you ever had a partner who got really jealous when he found out that your sex life with an ex was different in some way to your current relationship? I don't really talk about my sex lives with my exes, <laughs> my boyfriend will probably kill me. <laughs> and I haven't really been as open about my previous sex life with new boyfriends. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend asked me how many people I'd had sex with very early on in our relationship and I lied because he was being quite insecure about it and he reacted with sort of significant relief when he realised that my number was just under his. But um wasn't true and I just never enlightened him about that. That last girl is not alone. Many women lie about their body count and they always give the same excuse. I, I lie about how many men I've slept with because my boyfriend was so insecure. But is it really insecurity or is it a rational concern? If a man says that I don't want to date a woman who slept with 50 guys, is that because he's really insecure or because he's very rationally figured out that all of her previous sexual experiences have diminished her capacity to pair bond with him? He wants to be loved and he is accurately determined that she's going to be less likely to love him because of those experiences. Calling men jealous or insecure about this is just another example of demonizing men, shaming them for what are actually perfectly rational fears and concerns. But you know, what else is new? The conversation about body count and previous sexual experiences can often take women by surprise when they finally have that with their boyfriends because it seems so intense. He seems so focused on it and she thinks this wasn't a problem with any of my previous sexual encounters. Why is it suddenly an issue now? Well, yeah, it wasn't a problem with the other guys he slept with because those were just one night stands, but this is different. This guy is considering committing to you, being your life partner, having children with you, placing a huge amount of trust and love in your hands. The reason why none of those other guys ever inquired about your sexual history is because men place women in two different categories. Are you a girl for short-term fun or are you a girl for long-term marriage? And they're going to treat you differently based on which category you have been placed in. If a guy wants a quick lay, a one night stand with no feelings, no commitment, he's going to look for a woman who has some sexual experience. Yes, this is because he knows that all of her knowledge means that she's going to be fun to sleep with, but it's also because he doesn't want to feel guilty. 
If she's already slept with 50 guys, sleeping with 51 is not going to make that much of a difference. If he wants a one night stand, he's not going to be hitting on like naive virgin girls because he's going to feel too guilty. For a woman who is chaste like that, men can sense that there is something valuable about her, something that his masculinity tells him is worthwhile preserving. She's the sort of woman to commit to, to treat with respect and dignity. If he's just horny and he's just looking for someone to get off with, then he's not going to look to her. He's going to look for an appropriate woman to channel that sexual energy towards. For most guys, at least for the good, honorable ones, they're not going to ruin an unspoiled woman's capacity to pair bond for 10 minutes of pleasure. That's just not worth it. They'd feel too guilty. Do you think a person's body count matters in dating? No. Bruh. So what's your body count? Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> oh, so it doesn't matter then. <laughs> <laughs> Women want to believe that them being sexually experienced does not matter, but they know that it does. They argue that men shouldn't care, but I argue that it is sexist to shame men for their preferences. For years, I've been using the same analogy to encourage empathy from women towards men facing this predicament. I tell women, you say that a man should not care about your sexual history. What you've done sexually with other men in the past is irrelevant. Doesn't matter if you did different sexual acts with ex-boyfriends that you don't do with him. Doesn't matter how frequently you had sex with other men. If you were more passionate or more generous with past lovers, all of that is irrelevant. That's your position. But let's flip the genders, all right? Let me ask you this question. How would you as a woman feel dating a man who refused to spend money on you to the same degree that he did his past girlfriends? With women that he dated in the past, he would buy them expensive gifts. He would take them to fancy restaurants, fly them around the world on these lavish holidays. But with you, he does none of those behaviors. He keeps telling you that's completely irrelevant. There's no comparison. Don't focus on what happened in the past. How do you think most women would respond to that situation? Well, let's see what response they gave when I asked women this question. How would you feel if you found out that your past, that if you had a partner and you found out that they used to shower their, their exes with lots of gifts and romantic gestures, but they never did these things for you? How would you feel? I would feel a bit more insecure, definitely. I'd like want to be. I guess you would compare yourself to the ex, so you'd want to be a bit on their level. I guess. Well, it would be nice if you did that <laughs> with me. I would probably feel pretty upset. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I'd probably be super jealous, but I'd probably just like be very low key about it, not really like make it a big deal. I would be hurt, but I would look at it from a different perspective and see why that was. That would be something that I would ask about. I would say, what's changed? Like, is this something that you just don't maintain? Did you do that because you felt like you had to with her? If I was starting to feel really, really paranoid, like stalk his exes, not literally, just like go on their Facebook pages and see what they were into and what they were like and how come I'm less valuable to him than this person. That last girl, she said that if he spent less money on her than he did his ex-girlfriends, then she would feel less valuable to him. That right there, that is how a lot of men feel about her sexual history. If she did this sexual act with her ex, but she refuses to do it with him, if she used to have sex with her ex-boyfriend this frequently, but with you, it's only this frequently, a lot of men feel like she does not value them as much as she did her ex-partners. What I want to talk about in the rest of this video is that sometimes that is legitimate. They are considered less valuable by their girlfriends and their past sexual behavior proves that and you have to have a very tough conversation. However, there are circumstances where that's not going on and her attracted sexual enthusiasm can actually work in your favor. It depends upon the specific behaviors that your girlfriend is exhibiting and most importantly, what her intentions are. So you need to have a conversation to find out where she's coming from. If this is something that you're dealing with, jealousy over your partner's sexual history and you don't know what to do with that energy, you're going to want to watch the rest of this video. It's available on my Patreon. What I post here on YouTube, these are just the shortened, abridged versions of my videos. If you'd like access to the full video, come over to Patreon.